Meyer, Professor and Extension Horticulturist at the University of Minnesota. Today we're here at the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum, Bennett Johnson Prairie, and we're in the Prairie Garden, which is a special area where we've highlighted with a lot of labels and signage the wonderful plants that are in the prairie. We're talking today about the benefits of native grasses, and the grass I'm going to talk about today is big blue stem. Big blue stem, Andropogon and gerardii, is one of the main four grasses in the tall grass prairie. As you can see, I'm standing beside it here, and the grass is taller than I am. Big blue stem gets from four to eight feet tall. People talk about walking through the prairie and getting lost because of the size of big blue stem. Now, just as large as big blue stem is above ground, it has a huge root system below ground as well. And this is one of the benefits of native grasses. They have this huge root system that's very fine or fibrous. It breaks off or sloughs off annually, creating great organic matter matter in the soil. This huge root system can also uh, slow down erosion and is great for binding soil together, stopping erosion, and then improving organic matter. Now big blue stem with its size can grow in wetter sites where it's even taller, the tallest size. In drier locations it's not as tall, but it can have this huge mass, sometimes bunch grasses or sometimes forming a sod. It's the main grass that was formed to make sod houses that we hear about and read about in the prairie. I want to show you closely what the flowers look like with big blue stem. So the name turkey foot comes from the inflorescence or these big branches on the flowers that really look like a turkey's foot. They look like usually there are three but you can see there are several here growing together so the inflorescence is really a characteristic. Now we're lucky today because these are in anthesis or this is when the pollen sheds and you can see the pollen shedding maybe even as I uh, rub this because that burst of yellow is the pollen coming out with the anthers that are here. Now another distinctive characteristic of big blue stem are these long whisker hairs that are on the leaf right where it attaches to the stem on the leaf blade itself. And these long irregular hairs, they're really quite delicate, but they're very conspicuous if you know what to look for. They're much, much longer and irregularly spaced. And that's another way you can tell big blue stem if it doesn't uh, have the flowers on it. Big blue stem is a great plant to use in prairie restorations, in gardens. It's a wonderful native plant. It's very tough with no disease or insect uh, problems. But it's a big tall plant, so it, it can fall over sometimes in garden settings. We'll look at a couple of new cultivars that are of big blue stem that are upright and narrow, but for the most part it can flop and fall over. This new selection called Black Hawks is a dark red purple color. Now it hasn't flowered yet, so it'll get another foot or two taller when it does flower. But this is a more upright selection to look for in your garden. And most people are thrilled with this dark purple color. Black Hawks, big blue stem. The many cultivars of big blue stem vary quite a bit. So I'm standing in front of Lone Ranger. So Lone Ranger is just a young plant here, but you'll see that it's quite uh, floppy. It has a mind of its own and it is not the best for a garden setting. Another form is Indian uh, Warrior. Now Indian Warrior is looking pretty good. It's a dark purple color and it's upright, but as this ages and matures, this has a tendency to fall down also. So it's really important to know what variety or cultivar you have of big blue stem makes a big difference in the garden. great benefits of native grasses that many people overlook is how much they benefit wildlife. And attracting wildlife into your garden is something lots of gardeners want to do today. 
So Big Blue Stem is known for its wonderful forage qualities. So cattle, ranchers, uh, people raising cattle really know this. They talk about it being the ice cream uh, grass for uh, cattle. And bison love this plant. Uh, they fed on it and ranged uh, through the Midwest years ago and loved uh, Big Blue Stem. But interesting, white-tailed deer do not necessarily like this plant. So so many of the native grasses are deterred by deer and aren't eaten by deer, uh, which is great for gardeners. The other wildlife that Big Blue Stem supports are many of our native songbirds and butterflies. So there's over 24 documented species of birds that either nest or feed on the seeds of uh, Big Blue Stem. So meadowlarks, wrens, many of the different sparrows that were native in the prairie loved the habitat that Big Blue Stem made. And then now we have new documentation on the skipper butterflies. We have at least 11 different species of skipper butterflies where their larvae feed on the grass. And then the adult butterflies feed on forbs, wildflowers, like the Echinacea, uh, the bergamot that's right here beside it, and uh, liatris, many other wildflowers that are in the prairies support the adult butterflies, but the larvae require grasses to feed on in order to complete their life cycle. So big blue stem is important part of the butterfly habitat and food source. So many of our skippers today are endangered or threatened in Minnesota. So planting native grasses such as big blue stem can really help a lot of our native wildlife. So there are many reasons that you should think about big blue stem, one of the main grasses in the prairie for using in your garden. For all the benefits of native grasses, go to the website, grasses.cfans.umn.edu.